For the function p of x is equal to 3 minus 2x times the quantity x plus 2 squared times the quantity x minus 4, for which values of x is p of x less than 0? All right, so we have ourselves a gross-looking polynomial. Whenever you're asked to find out where it's above or below the x-axis, you're looking at three things first. Thing number one is you need the zeros, okay? Once you find the zeros, you care about the multiplicity. And then once you figure out the multiplicity, you're going to find yourself your leading term so you know the behavior of the graph. So let's find our zeros first. Our zeros exist whenever each factor is equal to zero. Okay, so my zero is going to be dependent for this first one on whether it's 3 minus 2x is equal to zero. So you might have to do a little bit of work, subtract 3 from both sides, divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, and the zero in this case is going to be positive 3 over 2. The other zeros are really nice, okay? Negative 2 is going to make that zero. Positive 4 is going to make that zero. We found our zeros. Check a -ruski. Now what we have to do is we have to find the multiplicity of each. The multiplicity of this guy is just 1, nothing fancy there. Okay, the multiplicity of the second one is 2. Now what does that mean graphically? We'll get there in a second. The multiplicity of the third guy is 1, easy peasy. Now the last thing I have to do is find out the leading term. You find out the leading term by taking the leading term of each parentheses and multiplying them to each other as many times as you're supposed to. Now in this case, I'm multiplying this second x twice. Why? Because the parentheses is squared. So my leading term is going to be found by multiplying negative 2x from u times positive x times positive x again times positive x a third time, which gives me negative 2x to the fourth. Now what that looks like graphically, and the reason why I do this, is I know this is going to look like an upside down m. Perfect? No. Accurate? Yes. Now what I do with all this information is I make myself a sine graph. I label my zeros negative 2, 3 over 2, and 4. I'm starting at the bottom here, okay? And I'm gonna make sure I notice that as I head towards negative two, because I know it looks like this, but as I head towards negative two, since the multiplicity of negative two is even, it's not gonna go through negative two. It's gonna bounce off like that. Then it's gonna come back up. It will go through three over two because the multiplicity is one. Come back down through four for the same exact reasons and my end behavior goes down that way. So, what I'm supposed to do with all this information is I'm supposed to find out when it's less than zero. Less than zero means don't include zero. So right now, as I'm starting from left to right, I'm less than zero. I am below the x-axis. So everything up to this point right here is less than zero. And then all of a sudden, I hit the x-axis. Now when I hit the x-axis, I am zero. I'm not allowed to include zero. So once I hit negative 2, I'm no longer negative. But the moment I keep going, I'm negative again. So I'm not including negative 2. So it sounds weird that I'm saying, let's go to negative 2 and then from negative 2, but that's how it is. So from negative 2 to positive 3 over 2, I'm negative again, right? And then the moment I hit 3 over 2, I'm no longer negative, I'm 0. Now I'm positive, now I'm positive, now I'm positive, but once I hit 4, I'm negative again. And it's going to stay that way forever. So from 4 on is going to be negative. So I go from negative infinity to negative 2, union, negative 2 to 3 over 2, union, 4 to infinity, A is going to be my guy.